The man can only see the dark room that has not been cleaned for who knows what amount of time. He does not even remember the last time he was able to have a nice and long sleep. But his main concern is that he has to go to work tomorrow as well. Slowly, the world turns dark in front of his eyes, and he faces his eternal sleep in this world of cooperate slavery. In another world, in the Magic Academy, Sawadi Shanker is stopped by a professor. The professor talks about how Sawadi is only good at restoration magic, which is good in itself but is not so much for a man and a commoner. Despite saying things like that, he wants to discuss how to restore the spine back to normal with the help of the magic. Fortunately, Sawadi does not want to help him and politely refuses by saying that he has to work his father. Team the professor disappointedly leaves. The real reason that Sawadi refused to help the professor is not because of his remarks, but because he does not want to overwork. Sawadi Shanker is 11 years old, and he is the son of a merchant family with political connections. He is a commoner who can use magic. He is a former company drone who died from overworking and reincarnated into this world. He does not want to work himself to bone in this world as well. So he, like any other reincarnated person, wants to use his prior life knowledge to make things easier for him. But there is a problem. Most of the things that he came up with already exist in this world. His cheat skill, you ask. Well, his ability to use offensive magic is zero, but in return, he excels at support and restoration magic. In this world, all people in power can use magic, but for a man, only the ones who can defeat their opponent with offensive magic get the recognition from the society, so he has zero chances in political contest. Regardless, he is a son of a huge business owner now and does not have to be cooperate drone anymore. So this is a plus point of his reincarnation. He plans to build a theater someday and slouch on the best seat while watching a play. Who would not want a life of spending time doing nothing? But for Sawadi, this is not a dream. This is his aim in life. In order to achieve this aspiration, he has come up with a new business plan. On his way, he meets his two slaves, Vongo and Pickles. Despite being the slaves, the two girls look happy and give the day's earning to him. The currency value in this world is one gold coin is equal to 100,000 yen. Sawadi is currently making 10 gold coins per month. And after subtracting the living expenses, he is able to save two gold coins as his profit. Right now, he has two slaves. They are not paid but get an allowance and regular meals. Employee welfare is important after all. Employee welfare is such an endearing word that it makes his head hurt. Let us not remember the past life. Anyways, the business plan that Sawadi came up with was to buy cheap slaves and have them work as adventurers. One year ago, of course, it was not an easy task for a young boy to buy slaves. He saved his allowances for this purpose. On his request, cheap and defective slaves were prepared. He could restore the defective slaves with his restoration magic and they would return the favor in return. He takes the centaur girl who has bad legs and eyes. After the paperwork, Sawadi swiftly uses his detection magic to detect the issue and uses his restoration magic to heal her legs. The girl is finally able to move and gratefully thanks him. After he brought her home, Sawadi took care of her to the fullest. As for Pickle's eyesight, it is bad because of her other blessings such as digging a hole faster and swimming. It cannot be treated with restoration magic so Sawadi gets her glasses. She can now see the beautiful world and sheds tears of happiness. After so much hard work, Pickles is tasked with her first adventurer job. The start of Vongo was also not so different. She does not really remember anything after she was sold. Sawadi so told her when harpies cannot fly, their blood will rot and they will die. Maybe she was also dying. Since becoming his slave, she was well fed. Her wings also started growing due to his restoration magic. After her wings got to full size, she practiced flying non-stop from morning till evening, just so she could fly again. It was hard and she made a lot of mistakes, but Sawadi was always beside her. One day, she was able to fly so high that she shone. Since then, she has been working at the guild with the younger slave Pickles, who is like a little sister to her. Together with her, she is determined to protect Sawadi. She is glad to be part of this society where everyone is so nice. She wants to be like them one day, to be able to teach something to others, to be someone who can help others. This is something that both Pickles and Vongo want to achieve, so stay tuned on their journey. It has been about half a year since Sawadi has two people in his adventurer party. 
The business is going pretty well, but he wants to earn more so that he can have a breather when he graduates from the Magic Academy. The business is generating money, but it is not fast enough. So this brings us to back to Slave Shop again. Sawadi wants to earn money, but Pickles is more excited in anticipation. The time they came to buy Vongo, the slave trader eagerly asked to sell Pickles. Sawadi refused, of course. Now he is introduced to three more slaves and he purchases all of them. They are not in good shape, but that is not a problem with Sawadi's restoration magic. Three weeks later, the slaves are busy training. From the day they were purchased, Sawadi took them back and gave them treatment. Mince is a former soldier and a lizard folk, so her regeneration is incredibly fast. She is strong and can endure punches as well as slashes. On top of that, she is resilient to poison and fire but weak against cold. Her brain is a little anyway, it's worth to have her in the team. Roast is a former adventurer, she is a fishman and as you can see, she is energetic and strong-willed. Although she got beaten twice by Mince, after having an argument with her, she is able to connect with anyone and everyone. It might be due to her background as an adventurer. Lastly, a former merchant apprentice, Chikin. She had problems with her internal organs and almost died. Having her back to normal with magic is a win in Sawadi's book. At first, she was meant for non. Physical jobs, but since she was sold during her merchant training, her skill is still questionable. Sawadi intended to train her to help with the family's work, but it seems like the family's head accountant is interested in training her. So after some back and forth, Sawadi agreed to lend her during the busy season. She came after seeing that intensive training, came and begged Sawadi, in tears for not making her train like the others. Sawadi felt sorry for them, so when he banned intensive training on and only allowed it once every three days, Roast came and thanked him admiringly. Sawadi is bored as he listens to the old man who came to invite him in healing on behalf of the Holy Relief Institution. He lately, Sawadi has been getting more and more requests, like the old man who offered to be his slave if he healed him, or like the old man who offered him his daughter if he healed him, or like the old man who offered him his daughter if he healed him. All of them have been old men, Sawadi manages to shoo away the old man in front of him with Roast's help. Looks like there is a misconception about him being perceived as an altruistic man. He buys slaves, heal them, and make them work as an adventurers that is pretty popular in this city. Right now, he has four members in the team and he gets 50 gold coins a month. After deducing the expenses, he is able to save 10 gold coins a month. He is making a lot of money right now, but compared to his family's business, he has a long way to go. Some days later, two maidens seal and hunt, introduce themselves in front of Sawadi. For some reason, his older brother gave them to him after finding that he is looking for slaves. After much pondering, Sawadi decides to use them as chefs. Although the girls came ready to serve him in other ways, but Sawadi is not interested in such activities. He is thinking of the long run, such as having illegitimate children and being beaten by his wife like his older brother. So to train the two chefs, he starts by telling them the recipe of spaghetti that is not known in this world. He plans to sell it in the future. However, Sawadi is not so good at cooking and this is a fact known after many experiments. So he decides to let others cook for him. After many trials, the girls succeed in making the spaghetti so Sawadi makes the sauce like some famous TV show chef. The taste is fine and the smell invites the other team into the kitchen. But that was not all. The smell even fetched others in the house, so they made a lot of pasta that night. At the Magic Engineering Laboratory, Chris Holden, an undergraduate student who was appointed to tutor Sawadi, is very worried. It is not because he is a problem child, but rather because he is a genius who was able to do the experiment for the first time with mere instructions. The experiment that he succeeded in was the one that she herself could not achieve. But he simply said that he was able to achieve that because of her clear instructions. A child like her does not need a teacher like her, she thought. After a meeting with the dean and being praised, Sawadi walks in the hallways. But from the attitude of the students, it is visible that the commoners are not kept in high regards. That is because of the fact that the mages that mostly come from the noble families rule this country. He meets his friends who are also commoners and love theater. After talking about grades and future plans, they leave to watch a play to commemorate the end term. After a die-hard fight with a monster, Sawadi is healing the team members. Roast think that her master is trying to make his own army by the way he is making them fight like this instead of selling them after healing. 
She has prior experience that mages can do immoral things without batting an eye. A few day ago, the team was in a trouble while fighting a monster. For their aid, chivalric orders White Dragon Knight came and defeated the monster. From then on, they knew by instinct the Thay mages are in another league altogether in strength. Mince got hurt in the fight and while she was recuperating, she practiced to use the chopsticks that Sawadi made and even got treated with his new dish. Thanksgiving is a traditional festival celebrated twice a year. Seal and fellow slaves are running a food stall and also performing a stage play. The play that they are going to perform is titled Once Upon a Pepperoncino. Hunt is one of the artists one performing in it. Sawadi trained her vigorously to attract more customers. His performance made everyone in the room laugh, but when Hunt pulled the same face in the crowd, everyone was blank. She used to think of him as a genius, but after this experience, she is thinking of herself as an idiot for believing so. She is so embarrassed. During the training, new members like Hunt and Seal were able to be comfortable around the rest of the team. Hunt thought that her master arranged this performance so that they could get along. In the end, they mingled with the crowd and were able to put a good show. Everyone was happy at the end. A lot of people are gathered in front of a building, looking excited. Today is the inauguration ceremony of the each of the executive positions of the Clan Magical Schenker Group, aka MSG. It is a clan of adventurers where the main business staffing agency, since Sawadi was making a lot of money. He decided to start a new business, through his father's connections. He was able to purchase a ruined factory at a low price. As per usual, he brought injured slaves from the slave shop and healed them using his restoration magic. This time, there was a large influx of new slaves and that means that the abilities they have also has diversity. All of them are given allowance, of course. And for the former adventurers and the like, since these rowdy people are not suited for delicate jobs, they will be working for him as adventurer at the guild. The chance of friction also increases as he have more brute slaves now. He decided to divide the slaves into three teams. The former slaves were given positions as the head as they will be the ones to lead the adventure personals. The purpose of MSG is to manage these adventure teams. Mince became the captain of the clan, while Roast is the vice captain. Pickles is appointed a squad leader and Vongo as the vice squad leader. After the ceremony, the part for the formation of the clan starts. After looking at the excitement and joy of people, Sawadi was convinced that MSG will have a bright future. At the academy, Sawadi made a new invention, an artificial beast. His professor is impressed and couple him with Chris to work on it. The reason for the discovery is not because of getting famous but for getting the profit. That is the case for Sawadi at least. Since then, the research has been progressive, so much that a whole two years have passed zipped by. Now Sawadi is 13 years old. Speaking of the research, it has led to the creation of modular type dragons. His supervisor, Chris and his other supervisor after her got called to the capital, and they would continue the research at the research lab there. Sawadi, who finally released from the research, could finally enjoy a happy after school life, or so what he hoped for. While he was casually researching on reducing the production cost, he accidentally invented something extraordinary, an artificial beast that gets its energy by absorbing magicules from the air, so it does not need a magic crystal anymore. However, they cannot publish it yet because they do not have a supervisor. Sawadi does not want to work for it and lets his professor handle everything. With his current income, Sawadi does not think he will be able to fulfill his dream of constructing a theater before his school graduation. So in order to get more money quickly, he decided to take a slight risk. Under the headquarters, they secretly dug a tunnel that connects to the dungeon outside the city. He plans to make a magic crystal factory by using the artificial beasts that generate magic crystals by accumulating magicules. But the yield is so worse because the amount of magicules in the air is thin. Therefore, he decided to make use of the thick magicules of the dungeon across the river outside the city. Magic crystals are hard to come by and sell for a high price, yet he have an inexhaustible source in my hands. He cannot help but laugh at it. All that aside, even if the slaves are obedient, maintaining their motivation is still important. So he speaks of all the perks, such as boosts and buffs, as well as booze if, if they are low on energy. By the way, Sawadi also opened a fancy coffee shop next to the MSG headquarters for the sale of slave welfare and as a business. He dressed his slaves in cute outfits and have them be the cast members of the cafe. 
it turned out to be success. At this rate, he has to come up with many more things because being responsible for this many talented people is quite stressful. The morning at the MSG headquarters is quite busy. The slaves are handling it quite nicely. The Fortchikin was the one responsible for all this on her own. However, today is her precious day off. She is out in the city to have fun. She notices that sitting in the outdoor area while wearing good and fancy clothes has become a status symbol in the city lately. She visits many shops and decides to work more so that she could afford everything she wants. However, as she looks in the mirror, she tells herself to control as a slave dreaming of luxury is only something that can happen in the Schenker family. Her thought process is disrupted by Roast, who just arrived at the scene. Chicken gets provoked by her and enthusiastically shouts about fashion. She notices that the shirt that Roast is wearing is from a brand. However, it seems like Roast got it as a gift from someone. She often gets gifts similar to this one, so she does not need to buy stuff often. Chicken is not so happy after hearing it so she decides to make a lot of money and be the brand of fashion. On the other hand, Sawadi is pondering about the supervisor that is coming today for his research. On his way, he is stopped by Lola, who will be starting the research in the lab from today onwards. While visiting a theater, Sawadi meets Lola by coincidence. She is an ex-army researcher from the capital who is 21 years old and also 20 centimeters taller than him. It is such a coincidence to meet her three times in a row in the same theater. Is it really a coincidence, though? Sawadi reads the room and offers her to show her around the city. In a cafe, Lola talks about her army days and Sawadi listens to her. He understands that she is suspiciously trying to get closer to a commoner student so she must have found about the crystal factory. He also has his suspicions that she is sent here as an investigator from the military. They have been to many places and at last ended up in this cafe. They talk about interests for quite a while until she tells him that she has met his favorite screenwriter. Sawadi gets excited, but Lola says that they can talk about it next time. The disappointed Sawadi could not help but think about legendary screenwriter. After one week, Swati drags Lola to the cafe to hear about his much-anticipated topic. They talk about it and Lola tells him that he is different from the stories that she heard about him. This is the time when Sawadi is reminded of his initial suspicion that she may be an investigator. She gets to the point and asks if he is the one to invent the artificial beast. Sawadi is glad that the secret of the crystal factory is safe. However, what comes next is even more challenging. The country wants to make him a noble to reward him as his invention helped the military. The age gap is a bit big, but Lola is going to become his spouse. She says so while blushing. However, Lola is from a well-known family and her family would not want a commoner son-in-law. Lola tells that she has been kicked out of her house because she got magic organ failure and cannot use magic or give birth to a child with strong magic. Sawadi feels complex about her situation, but in the end, he can only goofily says that he can heal magic organs. There is a silence before the storm. Lola is so surprised but is becoming more and more interested in him. She tells him to think about the marriage proposal. Sawadi is a commoner, so he cannot refuse her easily. So he evaluates her body and asks to have a few conditions. She is open to hear them except having mistresses. Looks like she is a possessive person, but not to worry. Sawadi's condition is to own a theater, want to watch plays there once in a while and not working. She accepts all of them and gains cool points from Sawadi. At the end, Sawadi asks if she is actually okay to marry him because he does not want to have a one-sided relationship. Lola thinks about it for a minute and whispers in his ear that she has never been in a romantic relationship, so he has to teach her everything about it. To Sawadi, this is not a passing or a failing grade. This is not a marriage of love after all. What happens next is what matters. Lola assures him that she thinks of him as a cute little brother, but Sawadi does not know if he should be happy to hear that. There is no ambiguity in the battlefield. It is either life or death. Lola wishes to erase her memories from those days. As soon as she wakes up, she prepares for the date with her cute little fiancé. As they sit in the carriage, Sawadi is nervous looking at her, so he talks whatever comes to his mind. Lola listens to him happily anyways. They watch a theater together, but Lola's attention is towards him, thinking that he is super cute. After the theater, they head towards the MSG cafe. For the first time, Lola finds about the amount of slaves Sawadi has and thinks that he is building an army. Sawadi clears the misunderstanding and tell about their jobs. 
However, Lola notices that the slaves are trained for other things as well. She purposefully lets her dangerous aura out, making slaves take action to protect their master. Lola can clearly see that they are ready to give their lives for him. She found yet another interesting thing about her cute little fiancé. Magic organ is an internal organ that animals have for gathering magicules. It captures magicules in space and stores them inside the organ. After a certain degree over several years, the unused stored magicules inside the organ will transform into crystals. These crystals are called magic crystals, which have become an indispensable source of energy in this era. Mages to it to fight and to perform other daily activities. Using magic over the limit of the organ will destroy the organ and make the person unable to use magic anymore. The reason for this lecture started about two weeks ago. Lola taught Sawadi about the power of the magic organ healing and the troubles that can come to him with this power. All this time, Sawadi thought that it was part of the restoration magic. I've been in school. No one told him because no one pays attention to what commoner mages do. Lola tells him that he has three options. One, join the military and become a magic organ restoration unit. Two, keep this technique a secret. Three, make this technique available and known only to certain people. Even if she gave him three options, she already know that he cannot choose the first and cannot choose to keep it a secret as some people already know about it. So this brings to the last option. He will be treating the veterans only and Lola's treatment would lay the groundwork for that. After the treatment, Lola's magic organ was restored in the presence of Lord Qualis. Lord Qualis was invited by Miss Lola from the capital. He is an appraisal mage who acts as the trusted eyewitness. He is their confidant on the capital's side of this plan. He advises to leave this matter to Lola and capital's military headquarters as losing an organ is not a simple matter. Lola finally wakes up with her magic organ restored. The first thing she does is use her magic or bring out a cigarette. Sawadi is lost in her efficiency of using her magic. She thanks Sawadi and urges him to give her a hug. Lord Qualis does not approve of showing such affection in front of an elderly man, so he leaves after affirming that the treatment from now on will take place here secretly, and the price will be decided by the patients. Lola has no objection, as she has more money than she can spend. Sawadi naturally does not have a problem with that as Lola would be paying her 100 gold coins after he treats a patient. That is the amount she gets as a pension. She was not kidding when she said that she would provide for him. On top of that, she is a strong-willed and touchy person. Even though Sawadi has much experience being a reincarnated person, his heart races when he is near her. A knight who lost his magic organ was told about a way to restore it by a superior. So he traveled to the city where he met Sawadi who treated him and restored his magic organ, making him use magic once again. This became the story of many people. Sawadi thinks about the ways to spend his hundred gold coins this time. He plans to buy the areas on top of the tunnel and turn them into the business. He will have to rely on Chikin to place the slaves on the right positions according to their talents. As he thinks about the circulation of money in not only this city but other towns as well, he makes an evil face. Lola notices it and reminds him to slow down in his planning. Sawadi also thinks that his ultimate goal is to build a theater so he should not be hung up on making money. The slaves, on the other hand, are content with their lives and are thankful to their master for providing them this happiness and family. A good news for Sawadi, the capital is interested in his project of Magic Crystal Independent Transcontinental Rail Transport and even gave him grant to continue the research. It was a proposal that he mindlessly put together as a part of Magic Crystal Independence Research Project so that he could at least increase Lola's research credit. Seemed like the proposal got sent to the capital city, and it came back with a huge sum of research grants along with an exciting instruction attached to it that said conduct a long-distance demonstration from Torquiva to Luevuma. Since that news dropped, Marino's lab was in shambles. Professor Marino, as the supervisor of the project, had to deal with various documents and coordinate with many agencies. He had to visit many places from morning until evening. As for Sawadi, he got a course exemption. Together with other fellow researcher, he became so absorbed with it that he would spend my days and nights doing research. And so, the chaotic three months had passed, and the perpetual engined train was completed.
Somehow, they managed to finish the train that they called Perpetual Train just before the deadline, but they were not able to solve the low output problem. It is now time for the, the first test ride of the train, and it is too slow. After some stressful hours of waiting, the Perpetual Train finally ran at a decent speed, carrying the now. Reassured VIP guests and the completely worn out Professor Marino toward its destination. They came across giant bugs during our trip. Some passengers were shooting those insects down using magic, so they also had fun activities while traveling. The journey took us several more hours than a normal magic train to finally arrive at Luavuma City. As a result, this perpetual train research as well as the draft of making it have a magic crystal hybrid engine to improve its speed were taken over by the capital city. A new transcontinental railroad was launched soon after. By the way, this new railroad was named Transcontinental Frank Railroad after principal investigator Frank Marino. The people in town are gawking at the sight of a strange but fancy horse that is ridden by Sawadi and Lola. It all started when Sawadi's older brother, who is a neat and knows a lot of people but is friends with no one, begged him to make a super fast horse. Sawadi refused at first, but his brother lured him in with a slave who used to work in a theater. That was why Lola, Sawadi, and the adventure team went on a journey in order to test drive the horse that he made for his father. This trip also proved to be a way to flirt until the adventure team arrived. The mood between them and Lola was tense, as their first interaction did not went so great. The team detects a titan centipede in the sky and implores Sawadi and Lola to escape, but Lola is too powerful to escape, so she simply destroys the monster. This move gains respect from the team and they are able to get along well. Sawadi has been busy for a long time, so after the completion of the project, he feels too idle. He meets his brother and cute niece and listens to his brother advise him on responsibilities. He then goes to the cafe and eavesdrop in the slaves chattering. He then heads towards the tunnel that is progressing well, but is still thinking about the marriage, future, and responsibilities. After much thinking, he announces to his slaves that they are going to get regular wages and can even get married. He wants to take care of their needs and is responsible for them even when he gets married. He also announces to retire pickles, mince, roast, vongo, and chicken. However, they want to stay in the clan and continue to serve him. In excitement, they all jumble together, making him fall under them. Sawadi now understands that responsibilities are heavy. He is having his sweet time with Lola when she brings up the eternal magic crystal. It is kind of like a substitute for a magic crystal. He wanted magic crystals so badly that he accidentally made one. It is a magic, crystal-shaped artificial beast. And like a normal magic crystal that depletes after being used once. This crystal absorbs magicules, allowing it to be reused multiple times. The output of this eternal crystal is still too low, but Sawadi thinks that it is still early for the society and for him to make use of this discovery. As soon as he decided to hide it, it was discovered by Lola. She suggests to discuss this with Professor Marino and even gives him an idea that he could make it useful for a few times use only and needs to detune after a while. Sawadi likes this idea as it is a business plan. While observing him, Lola asks if he is hiding something because he has the aura of a dead person. It is like he has escaped death before. So Wadi denies it and take it as a joke, but his eyes betray him, shedding fountains of tears. Lola is surprised, but is kind enough to ask him about his story. So Wadi has a burden inside his heart, but he is afraid that even if he told her, she would never understand. She is the one he wants to tell and for her to understand. However, his inner demon convinced him that no one is interested to know the real him and only care about his selfless self. Lola reassures him that she is going to listen to him and believe whatever he is going to say. After gathering much courage, Sawadi is able to tell her that he is someone from another world. Lola does not even bat an eye as she believes him. Sawadi is finally able to fight his inner demon and come to light where everyone is waiting for him. Pickles is going through an audit of her weapons but most of the things are her keepsakes and gifts that she received. Jill and the auditor fares her in good regard as she leaves. She is in the management of the MSG, but what she really wants is to open up a brewery. She is looking for a good land, but has still not found the right place. She is tipped by the worker of a bar that there is a cheap plot of land that used to be an inn. Jill and goes to the location, but it looks sketchy. She finds the location and the area to be good, 
but the one managing the place is a stubborn old man. She finds him sitting near the gate, so she gathers her courage and greets him. The old man remains quiet and falls on the ground shortly after. Jilin panics and takes him to the MSG headquarters where he is treated by Sawadi. Jilin sits outside the treatment room thinking that it was her fault and that she is going to be sold. Sawadi reassures her that it was not her fault that the old man's chronic disease acted up and there is no way he is going to sell her over a small matter like that. He even suggests to negotiate the price of the plot right now, as it will be more easier. Jilin is touched by his words and start to cry even harder. Shikin takes the role of calming her and tells her that in the past. She also felt like she was not useful but that changed over the period of time. However, Chikin could always felt that Sawadi did not trust them. There was a big boundary between him and the ones around him. However, one day, he showed the real him. This was all thanks to Lola who was able to bring out the real him out. Chikin describes him as problematic, but Jilin could see her make the same face as Pickles when she talks about Sawadi. She thinks that just like she does not understand what that expression means, she also does not know for sure what is the right path for her to take. So she is going to work hard and wait for that time where she can better understand things. Several days later, Jilin gets invited to the drinking party of celebrating her buying the land. She thinks that this is a big step as this means that the rest of the team is acknowledging her. She enters with great motivation but finds everyone drunk and out of control. She finally saw their true colors. Sawadi and Lola are busy preparing for their wedding ceremony. Sawadi is going to be a part of the nobles now, so he needs to remember their names. Lola helps him cram them until she finds one name and is taken aback. That is not the name of a friend but of a rival. They both promise to invite each other on their weddings and Lola is excited to show her magic. Sawadi warns her not to cause a ruckus on their wedding day. None of the family from Lola's side would be coming to their wedding. They kicked her out of the family, but Lola does not resent them as she understands that they have responsibilities and other problems. Sawadi promises to have a happy life together and tells her that he wants to have five children so they have to work hard. It is finally the wedding day. The guests are gathered and greeting each other. Sawadi and Lola are also ready and talking in a private room. Sawadi is so nervous that his stomach hurts. Lola reassures him that everything will be okay and the two of them are ready to enter the hall. The cheers and clapping fill the atmosphere as the two of them enter and take their seats. However, the plans take a turn when the military marshal comes forward and announces all the achievements of Sawadi that he had kept hidden. Their wedding ceremony transforms into an award ceremony as Sawadi is rewarded with the Great Eagle Medal with swords as well as three diamond medal for his contribution to the country and the military. After both the ceremonies are completed, Sawadi greets his professors as well as the patients that he treated in the past. Lola finally meets her rival, Ihua, who thought that Lola would be in a slump after losing her magic organ, but here she is holding a wedding ceremony. Lola surprises her with her magic, so Aya understands that Sawadi was the one to heal her. She asks if she plans to return to the military, but Lola has no such plans. This causes a literal fire between the two of them, attracting attention from the crowd. Sawadi comes in front of Lola and announces that his wife is never returning to the battlefield and that he would protect her. Lola is touched by his declaration, but Ihai find it offensive that someone so weak is going to protect Lola from her. She uses her magi to attack Sawadi, but the patients that he healed all come forward to protect him. Iha calls them defective and losers and tell them to come at her at once. The fight is about to break when the dean tells them to stop this ruckus right away as this is a joyous day. Everyone obliges and things return to normal. Lola praises Sawadi for being brave and cool but Sawadi knows in his heart that this all happened because he is weak and powerless. In the end, the two of them make their vows. Sawadi is determined to protect the people around him and the happiness that he gained in his second life. Sawadi and Lola, who are officially married now, stated their newlywed life by Sawadi moving into her house. He is greeted by lines of servants and is shown to their room. He has been here a couple of times before, but the feeling of newly wed is making him nervous. He opens up the closet and the sight freaks him out. There are loads and loads of shorts in the closet. It looks like Lola still likes to see him in shorts even when he had grown up. 
Sawadi complains about it in front of Chikin, who does not pay him any mind and keeps working. She then suggests to use separate rooms as he still has school and lab to attend to. Sawadi has actually thought about it before, but Lola was against it. He finds even that part cute and Chikin has no option but to give in. Chikin tells him to go away if he is here to just brag or help with the work. Sawadi is here to brag, and he does not want to work. That is a fact from his own lips. Roast also comes in the room just to beg Chikin for some extra money, but is refused. Sawadi tells them that he has something that can help them get some pocket money. It is the new artificial beast that he made. Despite his excitement, the group is not so happy as his experiments can be dangerous. They grab the eggs despite feeling not so happy and the eggs turns into the animals. Sawadi wants the group to raise and observe them. The truth is when he visited his house, he found that the horse he made for his brother had developed consciousness, so he wants to experiment and observe some further. Sawadi and Lola are having lunch, but he does not seem to like it very much. When Lola inquires about it, he tells her that he cannot handle hot food in this warm weather. He tells about the cool dishes from his pervious life, so Lola suggests to make them. They go to the MSG headquarters for the ingredients. After that, he gathers the cafe team and split the work between them to make summon under his instructions. The dish is ready, but there is a slight problem. It is more of the udon than summon. The group is enjoying the dish, so Sawadi decides to leave it as it is. A large crowd gathers to try the new dish invented by their master. On their way back, Lola keeps calling it Somin that bothers Sawadi, so he tells her that it was actually Yudon and even decides to go back to the headquarters to explain to the rest of them as well. There is a problem yet again. Sawadi started to grow mushrooms near the theater building site to make more dishes and added a bit of magic to make them grow faster. However, his a bit of magic caused the mushrooms to grow in a massive amount so he has to take care of them, but this is also good for business, so all is well. Pool party is what comes to mind when talking about Rich's summer vacation. You might be wondering if there is a swimming pool in this world. The one where they are right now is a private-owned pool. Therefore, the answer is obvious. There was none, so they made one. A few days ago, Lola visited the theater construction site and brought lunch for everyone. A slave who works in the stall is married and expecting a baby. Sawadi tries to give her a gold coin as a gift, but she thinks that he is trying to buy the child in her womb and begs for mercy. Sawadi tries to explain that he is not trying to do so. He even lets the in charge know that the children of the slaves are not going to be slaves and tell him to let the others know as well. The pool was fully ready to be used late at night, so Sawadi and Lola were the ones to experience the first dip. Summertime pool is really the springtime of life. The next day, Sawadi went to Chikin to tell her about swimsuits that did not exist in this world, and the fashion fiend Chikin forced him to talk to the minor details. On the weekends, the pool was reserved for Sawadi and Lola while on the weekdays, the pool was open for all the slaves to enjoy themselves. All was good but a few girls drowned in the pool but are safe now. Sawadi's older brother also almost drowned while drunk. Sawadi is nor concerned about him. Sawadi can visit the pool to monitor the situation, but if Lola finds out that he is visiting a place full of women, she would turn into a demon, so he decides to go there in a disguise. But the girls are easily able to tell that he is their master. As he is making such an effort to not be found, they decide to keep it a secret for his sake, while understanding that he is here because of the drowning incidents. In the fall, Lola and Sawadi decides to use the pool for fishing activities, Looks like their thinking is becoming more and more same. Jihagesha, a large freshwater fish natives to the kingdom of Crownia. This fish is a firm, fleshed white fish. With notably muddy taste, it is one of few edible fishes that can be found even in this deep inland locale. Still, many dangerous monsters also inhabit near their habitat. Due to such high mortality risks, only a handful people dared to catch this fish, causing the culture of eating fish barely rooted in this region. As a result, the jiha'ai that was sold in the market was regarded as a luxury food by a group of people despite its unpalatable taste. Maybe it was the Japanese in him. He had this irresistible craving for delicious fish dishes that drove Sawadi to start a fish farm to breed the fish as well as remove the mud taste. Was it because the fish is such a prolific breeder or was it his magic's fault? Whatever the cause was, 
The result he got was beyond his expectations like usual. Since they produced more than what they could consume, they began to sell the farmed fish and before Sawadi realized it, he ended up starting a fish farming business. Soon after the once regarded luxury, fish had its price dropped. Restaurants and common households started to serve this fish and the fish became a staple food. Using those farmed fishes and an empty pool, Sawadi did a trial on the fish pond with some help from my farming staff fish. He even taught them how to fish and enjoy the fish that they caught themselves. This event bring Lola back to her childhood as she used to go fishing a lot in the past. She wishes to go to her hometown with Sawadi in the future. Sawadi also talks about his previous world and says that even if he got the chance to go back, he would not go because there is no Lola in that world. The town's mayor slyly tricks Sawadi into getting to make the festival at the Shanker Street. Sawadi was not able to refuse him and is now discussing it with Chikin. She thinks of the manpower and tells him that he could have just ordered them to do it. It is not like they can disobey him being his slaves. She asks if he has any plans what the festival is going to look like. Sawadi tells her to leave it to him, but she does not have a good feeling about it. He gathers the slaves and give them work according to their expertise. At the Magic Academy, Sawadi is looking a bit down. Lola asks if he is worried about the Eternal Crystal's progress, but the cause of his gloominess is choosing the songs for the festival. Sawadi does have a band that was primarily formed for his wedding ceremony, but they got famous and are now super busy. Lola suggests to buy healthy slaves that have musical talent, so he does. After buying the slaves, he wants to give them instructions, but they are busy chattering and are not listening to him. This attitude triggers Moimo, and she gives them a profound lecture, making the new slaves shiver in fear. Sawadi calms the situation, and the practice for the festival starts. The truth is, he went to buy healthy slaves, but the merchant only showed him disabled ones due to his reputation. He healed them, of course, and that is why they are here now. He is worried that the situation like this can happen again, so he ponders if he should make a slave handbook of some sort. As the fall wind dissipated his worries for the time, the festival preparations were going smoothly until the work was done and the Thanksgiving festival started. The festival started and is enjoyed by the people, including Sawadi and Lola. Sawadi takes her around the stalls and makes her eat the delicacies. As they move forward, they meet Vongo, who is in charge of security and caught the pocket pickers and thieves. Sawadi praises her for her work, making her feel proud. Lola, who is standing at the side, is bumped by a girl who asks about the location of the theater. Lola guides her and gives her cigarette, saying that if she gave it to the receptionist, she can get the best seats. Sawadi makes a strange face as he finds it suspicious. They keep enjoying the festival while talking about the play in the theater. There are many events, and with that, the Thanksgiving festival at the Shanker Street continued until late at night. At the MSG's Adventure Group home base, Sawadi is forced to watch a show of martial arts performance because he comes here rarely and they want to show him their training progress. He actually came to check on the musician group that is composed of newly bought slaves. He gave them a job of composing a music piece for a big noble, but Sawadi got busy and forgot about them. Despite no response, they kept handing in the music sheets until there was a thick book in his table. As they becoming more and more fervent about the job, they started to follow him everywhere asking him to confirm their work. The adventurers and the security guards were unable to overlook this problem, so they caught the musicians and sent them to take the new employee training. This brings us to the situation right now. Sawada tries to explain that it is not as if he actually does not care about the MSG's adventure group, but that he really wants to go home now. This makes Roast laugh out loud, and she tells him that they work so hard for his sake, to make him proud so he does not need to feel obliged for anything towards them. This experience made Sawada want to do something for them, so he went to Chikin the very next day after some persuading. She accepted his request and gives this task to the new management trainee Asuka. After the preparations are done, the official MSG Sports Festival starts. Before the sports festival starts, the representatives from each team come forward to take the sports oath. Due to the hidden words in the oath-taking, the things get heated up after the oath-taking. It is Roast versus Mint's team. After some remarks from the hosts, the first match of the event starts that is a sprint race, which is won by Kakla from the Postal Service in an instant. The first MSG's sports event. 
an event mainly for the adventurers with some participations from others, such as guards or the post women, a place where they can flex their skills in a fun way. This is Sawadee's way of giving back to the adventurers, since it would be more exciting to have other people outside MSG to watch it, so Sawadee made the event public to the townsfolk. He also made money by selling snacks and drinks at the event. The festival continue with many fun games and dances from the cheerleading squad. There is even an air show by Vongo Squad, and they distributed snacks at the entrance. Sawadee so thinks that it is good enough of an event for the first time, but he is called by the nurse because these are many players that got hurt. Sawadee so heals them with his magic, and the second of the event starts. Mince's team is winning so far so Roast's team has to make a comeback in this round. The last game starts, but the energy on the playfield is that of a battlefield. When Sawadee returns, he sees a big illegal brawl in the ground where the both teams are fighting each other. The game is supposed to be collecting the sticks, but no one is doing so. Sawadee calls for Jilin and Shikin, telling them to go collect the sticks. Shikin gives up on refusing and Jilin also just heads into the battlefield after much cowering. For this round, Mince's team wins but the winner of the event will be decided in the last game that is Tug of War. Next up, Sawadee heard that the last game was progressing smoothly. He only heard it because he was busy healing people. He hears a call for help and goes to check, only to find that Isuka is being dragged by other slaves because there are less people for the Tug of War. She does not wish to go, but Sawada convinces her. So the last game stated with great enthusiasm, with everyone cheering for their team. Sawadee is satisfied by the event and decides to go back to curing people when the musicians arrive. They have been thoroughly trained and want to show their new work to their master. Just then, Pickles and Vongo arrive at the scene, not on the either team, and have the most of the rewards from the games, and there is one thing written on their faces. We are the strongest, so the event ends with the loud cheering for Vongo. Opika does not understand as her father and mother hug her tightly as they cry. They are going to sell their precious daughter. Opika wakes suddenly and gets aware that she was dreaming. She is a slave now who is being transported among the others. She has a good relationship with the other slaves and even with the one taking care of them. It is due to the fact that she is the one talking care of the slaves and even helping the slave traders with the route they are taking. A shorty slave can also tell the location of nearby beasts, so it is quite handy. The one escorting them feels grateful towards her for being so cooperative and helpful. She simply says that she just does so to be useful and to keep herself away from the remembering the past. The man also remembers that scene and ponders over it. Opika reveals that she only has six months to live and that is why she was sold. The man tells her about the time when they got the shorty. He was sold by his guardian without any remorse. He did not even look back even once, but Opika's parents were different. This was the first time in a while that he saw that scene. That scene made him think of his family back home. He suggests to write a letter to her parents someday and tell that she is all right in the future. They continue their journey, but are attacked by a large beast. Everyone escapes, leaving the slaves behind. Opika is also afraid, but she is determined to save her sisters as she is planning to forsake her life for their sake, she is reminded of what her parents said before selling her. They told her that she can resent them for the rest of her life, but she has to live. Fortunately, the MSG squad, Vongo and Pickles arrive at time and save them. The slaves were then shifted to the town where they were bought by Sawadi and healed by him so fast that Opika did not even get a chance to talk to him. They were then provided with a place to stay and food. The very next day, they were assigned tasks according to their skill. Alpaca write all this in a letter and also mentions that she got a little sister now named Rubika. She is that shorty from the past who has grown up now. She lost a bit of innocence, but she is still really nice to Opika. Opika hopes to meet her parents someday and be together as a family.